the global ocean is rising, what will be the consequences? Already in this past century, we've had more than 20 centimeters of sea level rise that has already had impacts. But in this century, it's projected we could have as much as another meter of sea level rise and we can't rule out more. So this is concerning and it's, although it's critical to reduce emissions and combat climate change itself, it's also critical to know what the impacts may be of that amount of sea level rise and what adaptations may be effective. We don't have to wait until the year 2100 to find that out. We can learn today from communities like Ban Kun Tian, south of Bangkok, uh, where local sea level rise has already been substantial. Here we see the top of a temple. The rest of that temple and the remains of the former village are under the sea. And the reason for this is that in Ban Kun Tian and many other communities in the region, uh, local land has been sinking because of massive groundwater extraction. What this does is it essentially gives us a preview of the future for other shorelines that don't have that particular challenge. What my research will do is go to Ban Kun Tian and other uh, communities in Southeast Asia to understand the impacts of this amount of sea level rise and which of the adaptations they've tried have been helpful. We'll interview residents and community leaders, survey households, look at satellite imagery and other records to understand changes over time, and use modeling techniques that give us insights into how individual household decisions impact the overall social ecological system and how changes in that larger system in turn impact household level decision making. Now we might expect with this amount of sea level rise to discover a lot of bad news. To find, we might expect that adaptation costs push households into poverty, make it difficult for po households to escape poverty. We might expect that there are displacement and this might occur under desperation. Uh, we might also expect to find that mangroves are stressed. On the one hand, there's sea level rise, but from the land side, there are development pressures. And that's a problem because mangroves, if intact, store carbon and provide critical ecosystem services of stabilizing the shoreline and a critical nursery function for fisheries. So if we lose the mangroves, carbon is released, the shoreline rapidly erodes, and the fisheries become less productive and therefore livelihoods are less viable for communities living nearby. We might also expect with all these stresses, the community cooperation is stressed and may break down into conflict between neighbors. But this research will also try to see whether there may be another story here, whether there may be conditions and policies that help communities adapt or at least cope with these substantial stresses, and whether there are con uh, conditions and policies that can help people cooperate and adapt and include in that adaptation restoration of mangroves, which would bring the added benefit of all those ecosystem services, helping to slow the recession of the shoreline, helping fisheries be more productive. By 2030, I'd like to see a world where we've shared the lessons from communities like Ban Kun Tian and coastal communities around the world can look at those lessons, learn from them as they confront their own challenges in their own communities to the ongoing challenge of sea level rise. Thank you.